Good morning everyone, it's Wednesday 9 p.m. Brazil time. Welcome to class, it's time for class. In case you don't know me, my name is Renata and I'm an English teacher and I am here to help you take your English from okay to the English that only 2% of Brazilians actually speak. The English that is going to change your career, that's going to change your game, a, bring your A game to your professional life, you know, reach all the, the goals and dreams that you have. So welcome to class. I am going to invite my dear partner, MC, all the way from Canada to join me. As usual, we are here Wednesday uh, at 9 p.m. Brazil. We are a meeting tonight. We postponed the class for tonight. And welcome, MC. Welcome, partner. Hello, good evening, good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing today? Good evening. Hi, Leila. Guys, please leave your little hearts, leave your little likes to help us invite more people, you know, so, so, so that more people get notified and join us uh, to class since it's, it's a very atypical day for us to be having our live, uh, our live stream, isn't it? So please hit the like button, hit the little heart here. And, um, okay, so let's get started. What are we going to talk about today? We will be talking about a simple yet very important topic, which is related to grammar, but, the, but at the same time has been the, let's say, has called a lot of people's attention because it has gone beyond grammar and has reached society. And we're going to talk about it in the the... the the grammar point of view, all right, we'll be referring to it. Where are you here? Okay, here. We will be referring to the topic from the grammar point of view. Grammatically speaking, when we don't know who is involved in an action, we will be using they. No spoilers, but we will, we will be using they to describe the action, you know, to fill in the gaps, even if it's clearly only one person. But the discussion of gender neutrality is getting stronger and stronger, and we could have a class only about that, right, MC? Correct. We will. It's very uh, important, hot topic. Everyone wants to know a little better about that, so let's do it. Not today, later hot on. Hot topic. Hot topic in the corporate world. If you don't know MC, um, she lives in Canada and she works in Canada in a global company, and so she and, and she she uh, currently works in. HR, so she is in touch with uh, these topics every single day of her life. So she has a lot to share with us about that. But today we'll stick to grammar, and I wanted to show you something, uh, telling a little story behind my story with this topic. All right. So let's see if finally I will be able to get the pictures back on screen. I think I will. I don't know. There's a there's a the button for a mic. Am I supposed to? You're muting yourself. Yes. And I can also do this. Oh, new buttons. All right. Me but too. I have I all of those options Zuckerberg, here. That's not what I want, Zuckerberg. What I actually want is this filter, which, okay, let's see if I will be able to, okay, let's do it the other way around, the window filter, window, window, this one. Okay, as usual, I'm, I'm, uh, okay, ah! <laughs> I win, Zuckerberg, I think, can I, where am I supposed to add the picture, Zuckerberg? Okay, <laughs> he's still, he's still making a fool of me, I was supposed to be, to have the option, but no, no worries, I always have a plan B, you guys know that I'm always ready for these bugs that Instagram won't just, you know, let go of, but anyway, so let's grab the phone. But aren't you able to change the screen, uh, the green screen here? I No, if I click, this is what happens. If I unclick, if I click, no, I, it's not, okay. So it's our friend Zuckerberg that just won't let me be. So let's go here, let's go to the screen. And then we have, okay, then I don't need a filter, do I? No, I definitely don't need a filter. All right. So is they singular or plural? And what does Fergie have to do with it? If you just joined in, please leave your like, hit the heart button, because we are doing this live stream on a different day, you know, and we want to invite everybody in. 
Hi, Nayana. Hi, Nayana. Fast sister. Hi, Ari. Hi, Ana. Ed Media is only... Uh, Toy, there is no option for me to do that anymore. I don't know why. Zuckerberg hates me. So let me tell you the story behind my my story behind uh, this whole topic. Do you remember this song, MC? Boys, uh, boys, girls don't cry. Girls don't cry. By Fergie, her first solo song. Big girls and big girls don't cry. Remember that song? Um, sing a little more. This sen- this um, phrase is in the sentence, is in-, is in the lyrics. Jesus, what's going on with me today? And I'm gonna miss you like a child misses their blanket. Remember? No. No? no. Oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I, I remember uh, Fergalicious and uh, what else? Clumsy oh. uh, and all of that. All of that from maybe 2007-ish. This is, a ballad. this is a ballad. It's like a slow song. Maybe that's why you don't know it. So what, what uh, caught my eye when I saw this was like, the, I think it was from, from what I recall, this was the first time that I actually saw this being used the way that the grammar uh, tells you to. Maybe because I just missed the other, you know, moments where this happened. But this caught my eye. You know, like, I'm going to miss you like a child misses their blanket you know how kids have their security blankets that they need to sleep and you know they won't sleep unless you you hand it to them so that's very common for a child to do but look a child is a singular word and then why are we using their because a child can be a boy or a girl so when we don't know the gender when we don't know who we are talking about when the noun is neutral like child like that We're going to use their, not his or her, to refer to the child. And that is a grammar rule. The grammar will tell you to respect that. It's not my rule. It's not someone else's rule. It's the grammar. So this is how you're going to construct the sentence. Let's see. So, some it's, so a question. It's not a matter of being gender neutral, for example. It, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. It has always been like this. It's not something new. It's not something of the moment. As we said at the beginning of the class, this has been a discussion, right? Gender, uh, being gender neutral or not, respecting the person's choice uh, is something that everyone is discussing. But no, this is it's before that. It's way, way before that. So, you know, that's how the grammar um, tells us to use English. Okay, another example here. If Sally or George got a cold, I would have sympathy for them. Sally or George. As you can see, I'm choosing one or the other. Sally or George. Thank you, guys. Hit, uh, keep hitting the, the little heart. It's helping. More people are getting in. Hi, everybody. We are talking about whether or not they is a singular word and when we are supposed to use it instead of his or her. So, see, if Sally, if Sally got a cold, I would have sympathy for her. If George got a cold, I would have sympathy for him. But if I'm considering one or the other, a girl or a boy, a woman or a man, I will use them. Even if I'm considering the singular. It's not about plural or singular. This is a singular phrase. But, I mean, a singular choice. There is only one, one or the other. So, we're going to use them, the object pronoun. In this case, the possessive adjective in this case demonstrating possession and here just after the preposition we use the object pronoun them not they is it clear mc is it is it, it clear is. everyone else hi arthur hi Everton. It's all. i'm curious uh, i'm curious yeah, to <clears throat> i'm curious to know if you who are watching this now knew that before knew that um because When I learned that, it was maybe two years ago, my, it was mind-blowing to me. I remember vividly how shocked I was, like, because I was corrected at a point that uh, um, the person who, who was talking to me, she was like, well, remember when, if you go to uh, a grocery shop and, uh, and a grocery shop and then you, you're at the, 
you're um, asking for, for help and you're telling a story, for example, you don't want to refer. It doesn't matter if you were talking to an attendant or a helper. It doesn't matter like he or she in the story. Um, so then you refer to that person as a they. And I'm like, but they, they is plural, not singular. And yes. Um, illustrating that, let's say that you got to, you talked to someone on the phone before actually going to the store. And when you walk in, you say, look, I talked to someone and they told me that I could come here at this time because I would find the product. You know, they told me not, it doesn't mean that it's more than one person. It's just someone that you don't know, you know, who that person was. And it doesn't, maybe it doesn't even matter. As you said, I'm referring to that person. I'm talking to someone about that person. But the gender is not important. It's just someone. It's just a, a worker, you know. And um, and when you say in, in 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 other cases, if you do, if you really don't know the gender, you don't know the person at all, you have no idea if it's one, two, ten, and you say he or she or him or her or his or her, um, the other person will think you know. They will assume you know, and then you might get into trouble because you actually don't know. You know? Got it, got it, got it, got it. So let's see here. If Sally or George. Okay, next one. Hey, someone left their phone here. One phone belonging to one person, but we're going to use there. Someone left their phone here. I don't know who. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Not. I'm not going to say someone left his phone or her phone here. Now, tricky, tricky thing for us Brazilian speakers Because we don't really have that neutrality when we are speaking in Portuguese. So because we are bilingual, you guys know how much I love the fact that you are all bilingual. And we should all be proud of being bilingual because our brains work in, at the same time in different ways. You know, we, we force our brain to work in different ways. And sometimes it's just going to be on Portuguese mode and it's going to be a little more difficult to change, to switch the little key inside. You know, and you might bring that from Portuguese and say his or her, you know, thinking about the way we do in Portuguese. So understanding where you are coming from may help you when you want to fix it. Why am I saying his? Because I am coming from Portuguese, because I am thinking in Portuguese. So awareness, hashtag awareness, as we always point out here at Fluent For Real. Okay. So this fella here does not like it when people take food off of his plate, okay? MC, what do you imagine would happen if someone did take food off of his plate? He would say, Joey doesn't share food. <laughs> Precisely. So if that person did it, I don't know who did this, but they're going to be sorry. But they're going to be sorry they did it. They messed with Joey. So I don't know who did this, but they're going to be sorry. Maybe it was one person that messed with his food. Two people, three people ate his cake. Uh, women, men, men and women. We don't know. So I don't know who did this, but they're going to be sorry. They are. Not he is. Not she is. Any questions? Leave them in the comments. All right. Okay, so I said, now I got it. Uh, Arthur said, I always use the person because uh, because never told I could use they. Okay, Arthur, great. Now you can use the pronoun instead of using person, person, person all the time. Awesome. The robber left their fingerprints. The robber left their fingerprints. One robber, yes. But assuming that the robber is a guy is very sexist. Why is the robber a he? left his fingerprints. No, the rubber can be a woman or a man. Also, something that went beyond grammar, just to, let's say, add a little bit of that topic here tonight, is the choice of their instead of he or she in order not to, to be biased, you know, and be choosing the gender of the rubber or someone else. The rubber left their fingerprints. Whose company? Now a question here. Whose company? I don't know, was shut down. And what did they do about it? They, maybe the company belonged to one person, maybe the company belonged to more people. I don't know, but I don't know who I'm talking about. So 
I will have to use they in the question. A very common situation, all right? Common situations, hypothetical, situations involving people you don't know, or questions. Also very common, uh, commonly uh, a situation where you will be uh, in the need, you know, for they, them, their, etc. Before we practice, shall we just repeat the sentences and... Uh, okay. All right, just repeat the sentences with me, okay, MC, and everybody at home to start mastering and start uh, absorbing that more in a more realistic way. And I'm going to miss you like a child misses their blanket. And I'm going to miss you like a child misses their blanket. Good job, everybody. If Sally or George got a cold, I would have sympathy for them. If Sally or George got a cold, I would have sympathy for them. Someone left their phone here. Someone left their phone here. I don't know who did this, but they're going to be sorry. I don't know who did this, but they're going to be sorry. The robber left their fingerprints. The, the robber left their fingerprints. Whose company was shut down and what did they do about it? Whose company was shut down and what did they do about it? Now it's time for you to practice at home. If you are with us every week, you know that we are not just talk and talk. We want you to be with us and take the class with us. Do practice, think, and absorb the content from the class. So we have a sentence with a gap. Every client got a care package delivered to. And may I add, every automatically means uh, you have to construct the sentence, wh whatever verb comes after in a singular way. You are making the, the subject singular. I just wanted to put it out there. What is the answer? I want to see the answer in the comments. All right, Adriana, fantastic. I never heard about it before. Great, great to know, Adriana. Hello, everybody walking in. I want to see your answers. Every client got a care package delivered to... To... Layla gave the... Layla was the first one to give the answer. To... Adriana, them, Nana, great job, Karin, great job, them. Even though, ah, ha, ha, tricky comment, them, Arthur, them, yeah, tricky comment. I tricked you. I mean, I, did, I actually did not trick you. I said that every is a singular word just to, mm, to trick you into thinking it was supposed to be his or her. But no, the client could be a man or a woman. Assuming that the client can be a man or a woman, yes, we're going to say every client, let's repeat with me, every client got a care package delivered to them. Every client got a cake. Uh oh, oh my God, cake. <laughs> Guess I'm hungry. No, I'm so hungry. <laughs> every client got a, uh, got a care package delivered to them. Awesome. Each child played with your turn your turn everyone type in and while you're typing hit the heart hit the little like to help us thank you lady is exploding the hearts tonight as usual thanks layla <laughs> nana wrote there layla wrote there there mia there perfect each child played with their parent adriana good job as well vanessa with their parent. Once again, singular word, it does not matter. We're going to use the plural due to the fact that we don't know the gender of the child or even, even how many, I mean, how, how many is kind of implied, but we don't know the gender. A private person usually keeps two a little more difficult. This one is a little more difficult. What are we going to put here? What are we going to, how are we going to fill in that gap? A private person usually keeps two. This is tougher. I have this private person at home, so I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, actually, this is a grammar slash vocabulary answer due to the fact that to keep to blah, blah, blah is an idiomatic expression, which means, you know, not to tell people everything you feel or you do or not to share so much. Hmm. Okay, Guilherme has a, a guess here. A private person usually keeps two. Anyone else guesses? A five, a four, a three, a two. Okay, Mia, themselves, themselves. I, I may, I, I feel that Mia was a little bit insecure about that. Yes, themselves. Does it sound weird? It does sound weird, but it's true. It's weird, but it's true. A private person usually keeps to themselves. Guilherme, why Question. not herself? Okay. Does it have to be plural? Um, recently, some people have been using uh, themselves as a new word, as a new term, as a new gender neutrality, you know, term. However, still, it has not officially changed. Okay, so, so it doesn't it's exist. Still themselves. All right. So a private person usually keeps to themselves. And Guilherme, why not herself? Because person is only feminine in Portuguese. <laughs> it's not feminine in English. It's neutral. So let's repeat with me, everybody. A private person usually keeps to themselves. A private person usually keeps to themselves. And that's a great thing. So um, think about the answers that we had here today. We had herself, meaning that it's normal. It's automatic to us. Uh, to use like either a feminine or a masculine uh, answer, uh, mm -hmm. a gender specific answer, uh, considering our own language. Uh, and uh, because they is not associated to singular or plural in the whole situation and conversation here, it's just a matter of being neutral. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking that maybe you have an exception and it wouldn't be themselves. It would be themselves, even though it sounds <laughs> weird. Uh, but then, good to know. Good to know. It's actually, forget about plural and singular. Go for the the variation that is the, the standard one. Yeah, exactly. Forget about singular and plural. We have a comment here from Fifth. I've, I've just remembered asking you about this after watching Blind Love. She saw this and she wondered what it meant. So it's a construction, okay, Fefa, about um, whenever you don't know, you don't want to mention the gender, you use they. One more. Ah, tougher one now. Bigger challenge. Someone's apartment was sold last week with all that someone's furniture inside. I don't want you to fill in the gaps. I want you to make the question. Tough. What are we going to do with this? Transform it into a question, uh, knowing that you don't know these two pieces of information. What's going to happen? You know, you know that I don't, I don't take it easy on you. No, you I'm don't. I'm always pushing. I'm always pushing you a little bit further. <laughs> <laughs> Look how happy she is to make your, <laughs> your life so difficult. Yeah. I love a challenge. So someone's apartment was sold last week with all some of, you know, that's someone's furniture inside. How do you ask that question? Question for possession. And then the rest of the question, which is information that you do have. Any tip, any guesses, anyone wants to give it a try? Mm, Kari, almost, almost. All right, Leila, first the question. We need a WH question. Kari, Almost did it. <laughs> I'm happy I'm challenging you, Nana. Almost, Kari. Mm. Leila, don't fill in the gap. Make a question. Imagine that you are asking a question. With all... Oh, Mia this. got it. Mia, Mia. All right. Mia, Mia or Mia, I'm not sure if I'm saying your, na your name right this whole time. Okay, so let's begin from there. Who's, who's, not who is, Kari. Who apostrophe S means who is. We don't want that question. We want whose. Whose apartment was sold last week with all 
their furniture inside. Whose apartment was sold last week with all their furniture inside? Repeat with me, everybody. Whose apartment was sold last week with all their furniture inside? So we have the possession and the possession we fill in the gaps with questions. And all right, Arthur. Okay, good job. Got it? The, do you all understand what happened here? This is the question for possession. Whose? Not who is. Whose? Ah, uh, Michelle. Okay, Michelle. <laughs> It's me, actually, right? <laughs> me. Okay, Michelle. Whose apartment was sold last week with all their furniture inside? Okie dokie. Tricky one for you. Yes, not just for you, Kani. For most of us, most, of, most students when learning English have trouble with the, the question whose because it doesn't exist in Portuguese. Last but not least, the CEO of any company should comply with company's regulations. If you are enjoying this class, please hit the heart now. Thank you. Is there something <laughs> tricky here? Or we went no. from a difficult one to uh, back to an Kind of easy back, one. Back to a kind of easy one. Okay. <laughs> you can all relax. I want to hear the guesses. There. Oh, you're not going to hear, but you're going to read it. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> the CEO of any company should comply with their company's regulations. This is, I left this, uh, you know, this is the, the, the wrap, we're wrapping the class with this one because um, we assume that just like we do with robber, we may assume that robber is masculine. We also may assume that the CEO is masculine. So this does not look very pretty to say the CEO should comply with his company's regulations. So it's a matter of being, you know, of being polite and not being biased to some concepts. Uh, this goes a little bit beyond grammar as well. We are planning a class about that, about that, you know, how to be polite when using certain pronouns in English, considering the world's changes and what has been happening in the corporate world and uh, in the professional world in general, right, with social media and so on. It's something that we, we should know about. So that was the last sentence. Please, with like, that's how we feel. With no like, that's how we feel. So hit the like here. And also hit the like when we finish the live stream. Go to our IGTV or go to our feed. And please like the video again. It will help us a lot. You know, it will help uh, this live stream be more relevant. And it will help Instagram know that you enjoyed it. And go like, you know what? I think more people should see this class. I think more people should learn from these two girls. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us. This was a different day this week, was a Thursday, right? The class happened on a Thursday, which is unusual to happen. But anyway, thank you all for being with us and for, you know, giving us the feedback during class as usual. We love reading your comments, your questions, your guesses, you know. And thank you so much for being with us. Right, MC? Absolutely. Thank you. And we'll see you again next Wednesday. 9 p.m. Brazil time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Yes. Thank you, Leila. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you, thank you Michelle, Paulini. Thank you, <laughs> Arthur. We missed you, Arthur. Thank you, Luciana, Karen, everybody who joined in and who, you know, thank you, Nana, and that participated in the class. We will see you next week, next Wednesday at 9 p.m. as MC said, all right? Bye, partner. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Bye-bye. See you then. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Yes, and we'll beat Zuckerberg next time. Close. We're close. <laughs> We're close.